This lesson takes our knowledge of slope and combines it with something you learned in the seventh grade called the constant of proportionality. And the constant of proportionality is basically the slope when the line goes through the special pot point of the origin. So, fun fact, constant of proportionality is very similarly related to slope. All right, let's scroll down and let's look at example one. We're going to graph a proportional relationship. The cost y in dollars for x ounces of frozen yogurt is represented by y equals 0.5x. We have to graph the equation and interpret the slope. So what we did before, when we graphed our equations, we plotted points and we connected the, the dots. This doesn't tell us what x value to use, so we get to make up our own. Just as a throwback from our previous lesson, what does it mean to interpret? It means to explain what the number means using the labels in the story. So we'll get to that in a moment. Let's just graph first. So we get to plug in whatever numbers we want to use, but it, we have to make sense for the story. So if you look at the story, X stands for the number of ounces. So we're not going to do negatives, even though I tell you that you should. Um, our smallest number of ounces is going to be zero. And then we can just go 1, 2, 3, and just plug our values in. So we have y equals 0.5 times 0, which is just 0. So that is the number 0, 0. That's the point. Then we have y equals 0.5 times 1, which is 0.5. So that's going to go through the point 1, 0.5. Then we have... Um, plug in number 2, and that gives me 1, so I have the point 2, 1, and then the last one in my chart is 0. 0.5 times 3, which gives me 1.5, so that's the point 3, comma 1.5. Alright, let's make our grid, and we're going to only be in the first quadrant because we can't have negative dollars or uh, negative ounces. So there's my big L. And I'm going to put X and Y. And I'll label what the axes mean. Uh, X stands for ounces. And Y stands for dollars. Uh, so, zero, 0, is my first dot. Then I have 1.5. Um, let me go by 1's on the X, and I'll skip so I can have those 0.5's a little easier to graph. So I'll go 1.5 will be right here. Then 2, 1 is right here. And then 3, 1.5 will be right there. So that's my line. Let me label y equals 0.5x. And the only other thing we have to do is interpret the slope. So in order to find the slope, this time I'm going to use the slope formula to practice. So I'll use 1.5 and 2, 1 in the formula. So remember the formula is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So I'm going to plug in 1 minus 0.5 over 2 minus 1. So it gives me 0.5 over 1 which is just 0.5. Okay, but actually the fraction is a little more helpful for me to use the labels so I'm actually going to leave the um, fraction as my slope and I'm gonna try and understand what those labels are. So the label for um, the y values, if I remember that slope is change in the y over change in x. The label for y was dollars and the label for x was ounces. So 0.5 over 1 means 0.5 dollars and 1 ounce. Well, 0.5 dollars is 50 cents. So 
that makes sense. So now remember the slope sentences use per, every, or each. So my sentence is going to sound like this. It costs... Uh, you can write 0 0.50 or you can write 50 cents with the cent sign. Uh, it costs 50 cents uh, per ounce. You could write for every ounce or for one ounce or each ounce, but you have to have one of your slope words in there. All right, um, let's move on. The weight Y of an object on Titan, one of Saturn's moons, is proportional to the weight X of the object on Earth. So Y represents the Titan weight and X represents the um, Earth weight. An object that weighs 105 pounds on Earth would weigh 15 pounds on Titan. Uh, so that would be the X value and that would be the Y value. Write an equation that represents this situation. So back on the first slide in the previous uh, page, it said that the formula is Y equals MX. And M represents the slope, which is the constant of proportionality. So the formula for slope is change in Y over change in X. So let me just find that. The change in the Y is uh, 15. The change in the X is 105. So then I just have to reduce the fraction. So I can clearly see that they both divide by 5. So that would give me um, 3 and then 105 divided by 5 is 21. And then I know that 3 goes into 21 7 times, so that's actually the fraction 1 7. So the constant of proportionality, which we're now calling the slope, is 1 7. So that gives me a formula of y equals 1 7 x. And that's it. That's the equation. Let's move on to number 2, or letter B, I mean. How much would a chunk of ice that weighs 3.5 ounces, 3.5 pounds on Titan weigh on Earth? So remember, Titan is the Y and Earth is the X. So what I'm going to do is take 3.5, plug it in the Y spot, and then just see what I get. So I get 3.5 equals 1 seventh X. Now back in chapter 1, and also in 7th grade, I know you learned how to inverse a fraction, which is to multiply by the reciprocal. So we're going to multiply both sides by 7 over 1. And then you just get your calculator out. 7 times 3.5 is 24.5. So it would be 24.5 pounds on Earth. Alright, moving on to example 3. The distance y in meters that a four-person ski lift travels in x seconds is represented by the equation y equals 2.5x. The graph shows the distance that a two-person ski lift travels. So this graph actually represents the two-person ski lift, and they tell us a formula for the four-person ski lift. So we have to figure out which ski lift is faster. So what we can do is we can either find the slope of this line of the picture or we can graph our equation on the grid. I'm going to find the slope of the line because that's easier for me, but you can do whatever you want. So let's talk about rise over run. So the rise, even though it's going up four boxes, the boxes aren't going by ones, if you notice. So really, up four boxes went up eight meters, because each box represents two meters. So when you count up, don't count up one, two, three, four. You have to count by what it's going by. Count two, four, six, eight. So the rise is actually eight. Now I need to go across, and before you count, you need to look, okay, this is going by ones. So now I can just count across, one, two, three, four. So the slope of the two-person ski lift is two, and the slope of the four-person ski lift is 2.5, and 2.5 is faster than two. So the four-person ski lift is faster because it has the bigger slope. 
You don't have to say why, but I figured to make us all smarter, I would write down because it has a bigger slope. Now in letter B, it says graph. Okay, so to see letter B, we had to graph. So graph the equation that represents the four-person lift in the same coordinate plane as the two-person lift. Compare the steepness of the graphs. What does this mean? All right, so we have to graph uh, y equals 2.5x. So I'll just put a dot at 0, 0, and uh, 2 and a half. Oh, that's kind of tricky. If I go 5 over 2, that would work um, because 2 and a half is kind of hard to find in terms of the meters. So there's my 4 person, and the blue line is the 2 person. So compare the steepness of the graphs. So the 4 person ski lift that I just drew. This is four person, this is two person. The four person ski lift is steeper, uh, which makes sense to me because it's a bigger slope. And what it means in terms of the problem is that the it's going faster. All right, if you have any questions, write them down and ask me when you get to class.